I can't believe we fucking did it, girl. We fucking did it. We really did it. <laughs> it's Brittany and Nikki, bitch. Welcome to Good Vibrators, episode 19, the daily habits that are keeping you addicted to sadness and pain. This is your host, Nikki XOXO, and I'm actually recording this without an outline today because I am speaking from the heart. I'm speaking, well, my stomach is speaking too, but just growled, but I definitely just ate, so don't know what's going on with that. Um, but I'm speaking from the heart today and I'm speaking from experience and I want it to come off as natural with what I'm saying because I want you guys to know sometimes you don't even realize what you're doing is low key. You hurting yourself. You're making yourself a lot sadder and experiencing a lot more pain than you need to. So I'm excited to share with you some of the habits that you might not even realize are keeping you addicted to the sadness and pain that you experience because life is supposed to feel good. You were supposed to be happy. You are a well-being human being. Wait, does that make sense? You are a human being, right? And you are supposed to be naturally living a life where you're happy. You're not supposed to have a life full of sadness and pain. And when that experience occurs, it's your time to make a change. And instead of continuing on with what's making you sad and making you be in pain, If you don't realize what you're doing behind the scenes of that sadness and pain, then you're going to make yourself just experience it again. 2023 is going to be a different year for you. You're going to be doing things you've never done before. You're going to be feeling a lot lighter and living a life with more happiness. And I'm excited for you. So I'm just going to list these things off and it's not in any particular order. It's just what I am sharing at the time. First thing is... I'm sure you probably don't even realize this, but first thing in the morning is so important. Your first thoughts in the morning are so important for you to take control of. It sets a certain tone for the day. I'm sure you've all heard the phrase, I woke up on the wrong side of the bed, right? I'm sure you probably have said that phrase before, but did you really wake up on the wrong side of the bed or are you choosing to wake up and carry a feeling throughout the day that you could have just left in the bed. You know, I think that sometimes we don't understand how important our brain is when it comes to how we feel, right? And let me just say this. When you go to bed at night, it's really important to set a certain tone that you want to have for the morning. If you're thinking a certain thought when you go to bed and it's a thought that doesn't make you feel good, let me tell you how your brain works, right? You're going to wake up in the morning and that's going to be one of the first things on your mind. And you're just setting that tone already. That's why it's so important to try to go to bed with more of a positive vibration, right? Like it's important to try to think about the things you are grateful for. Like it's the easiest way to get your vibe high is just getting down to the simple things you're grateful for. And if it's hard for you to find something you're grateful for because you're feeling really deep down in your feelings right now, then the fact that you can listen to this podcast, whatever you're listening to this podcast on, that's something to be grateful for. The fact that you can see, if you can see, something to be grateful for. The fact that you have breath, to take a breath by yourself and not hooked up to a machine, something else to be grateful for. So in the morning, try to avoid thinking of all the things you're sad about, all the things that are not ideal in your life. Because that habit is low-key keeping you addicted to sadness and pain. Another habit that you may not even realize is keeping you addicted to sadness and pain is, oh my gosh, how much do we like to chit-chat about the things that we're not happy about, right? Like, why do we need to go over and over and over again about a story that is not pleasant for us to share and we have to tell the world about it. For example, I think about this moment a lot and I think about it because it still is something that I catch myself doing, but luckily the universe and God, like they really on my side because they'll make it happen where I can't even vent the way I want to vent about the thing that is not ideal. 
So let's say that you have a bad experience with something or someone and you're not happy about it. You already aren't happy about the experience when it's happening, but something inside of you wants to talk about it with someone else. You need to tell someone (laughs) that this thing happened to me and I'm so upset about it. And so you try to call your friends or your family or your bae and you have to explain what's happened and why you're so upset. And then you tell them about it and you relive that experience again and you feel that feeling again because that's how your brain works. The more you think about it, you're just going back to that moment again. You're letting that moment control you and consume you and it becomes your identity. If you don't snap out of it sooner or later, that's gonna be who you are that moment because you've decided that that's who you are. Let me just tell you, like last week, there was something that happened to me and I was really upset about it and I wanted to vent about it. So I was giving, I think I tried to call two people and they did not answer. And the first time I tried to call someone and they didn't answer, I'm like, ugh, let me try to call someone else. I need to tell them what just happened. And when I noticed that I didn't get the second call to go through, it was just a voicemail, I started thinking, oh my gosh, the universe is really trying to tell me like, girl, why are you trying to talk about this? Why don't you experience this feeling alone and uh, let it pass? So I just like didn't talk to anyone about it. And guess what? The more I sat with that feeling and was thinking about the situation, the more I started to have an understanding of the other person. And the more I started having an understanding of the other person that was making me feel not so good at that moment, I ended up not even being so hot about the situation. And then guess who ended up sending me a text message apologizing? That person, that person that I wanted to vent about, that person that I wanted to talk shit about ended up apologizing right when I was understanding where they were coming from in my mind and not even saying that I was wrong in the situation because I wasn't, but I was just understanding saying like, they probably aren't even having a good day today and I triggered them in some kind of way. And this isn't even about me. It's literally not, like it's never about you, it's about them. And when you leave someone to have that experience on their own, And especially if you didn't even like freak out on them, you just let them freak out on you. Most likely they'll take a look in the mirror and they'll say, wait, that wasn't cool what I did. And let me tell you, like, even if they don't do that, like, it's okay. Like they probably are thinking that, but their pride is not letting them apologize. And that's not your person. Like you don't need their validation. You just are going to feel a lot better knowing that you didn't have to lower your vibe again by reliving that situation, by explaining to someone else how a bunch of a bad person that person is. Like, why are you having to share that with someone? Now when I talk about someone to someone else, it's not to uh, replay the situation over and over again. And okay, listen, I'm not perfect. Sometimes I do talk about a situation with someone else, especially for certain circumstances, okay? Like, yeah, I do that, right? But try it out and see like how much of a difference the situation can be. Another daily habit that keeps you addicted to sadness and pain is watching the news every day. If you're not aware of it, can become so addicted to fear. You don't need to be afraid for so many things. Like, you don't need to be afraid so often. Think about like back in the day, right? When we didn't have the technology to see what's going on across the world. Like we as human beings, we were not meant to be so aware of so many things that's going on outside of our control. Like it's gonna drive you crazy because there's nothing you can do with certain things. You can't do, there's nothing you can do about certain things. So for you to see it and you can't do anything about it, why do you wanna feel that way? Why are you hurting yourself? Like literally stop watching the news so often and watch something else because you don't even realize you're addicted to that feeling of fear. And if it's not in front of you to hurt you, if you're not in danger, then it's not a big deal in the moment, okay? Now I think about the solution, like I'm more solution focused. So I saw the problems, right? And I'm just thinking, how can I spread love? How can I spread love to overcome all that hate that I see? You know, 
The frequency of love is, is a lot more powerful than the frequency of hate. So I just get my mind going on, what can I do? What can we do to overcome all that pain that I see out there? Instead of me saying, oh my gosh, look at all that pain out there. It makes me so angry. And you're just using that same energy and it's not doing anything for the problem. You're not going to fix the problem if you have that same kind of energy. You're just not going to do it that way. You have to set the tone differently. So yeah, just stay away from the news so often. If you need to be informed, then just set a certain time in your schedule where you look at those current events and then keep it moving. Like you can just find different ways to find that information too. The last daily habit that keeps you addicted to sadness and pain that I'm going to share, and there are definitely more that I could share, but maybe I'll do a part two for this episode. The last habit I'll share is not being aware of your thoughts, right? Not being aware of your thoughts can keep you addicted to sadness and pain. I mentioned this before, I think it's like 70,000 thoughts that you have in a day. And if you're not even aware that you have that many thoughts and you're just thinking whatever, then your mind actually goes back to the thoughts that it's used to. It's not gonna go back to the thoughts that feel the best. Unless you're the kind of person that already thinks that kind of way, like you're the type of person who has a positive mindset, then that's great, like those thoughts are good, right? But if you're new to the positive mindset life, then you have to reprogram your mind and get rid of those thoughts that you don't wanna have anymore. And in order to do that, you have to take a step back and look at what's going on in your mind. Really take a step back and think about what you're thinking about. Like actually right now, think about what you just thought about before you listen to this podcast episode. What were you just thinking about? And if it was not good, then look what you do when you don't even realize you're doing it. Like you think about the thing that makes you upset. You think about the things you're not happy about more often than the things you are happy about. Why aren't you thinking about, oh my gosh, I had such a nice conversation with such and such today. Or, oh my gosh, my hair was so cute today. Like I really got it to look exactly how I wanted it to look. Or just like certain things that are worth thinking about more Give it the attention it deserves and don't just push it in the back because you're not going to attract more of that. You're going to literally attract more sadness and more pain because you just think about it so often. It's like you're asking the universe for it. You're like, can I get some more of that? Because I love it. Like you low key love it, but I'm trying to let you know you don't have to love it because it's not good for you. So I believe in you. I know you can do it. I know you can break yourself out of that habit and you can stop the addiction to sadness and pain. Because once you start having the day where you think about things that are more positive and the things that you're more happy about, you're going to start noticing synchronicities. You're going to start noticing that you're attracting happier people. You're going to start having better experiences in life and you're not going to want that magic to stop. So you're going to do it again and again and again. Vibrators, I want to share an affirmation that I received today from a very cool app. I know you've heard me talk about it before, and it's called Belief App. Oh my gosh, this one, this one was really good. This one was so good for me to share, and it fits perfectly with today's episode. The affirmation for today is, I am at peace with myself and with others. I exist and I let others exist in harmony. I am at peace with myself and with others. I exist and let others exist in harmony. I love that. OMG, like if we all just loved ourselves and was just so happy with the place that we are and the person that we are, we would not care and not be so concerned about how other people are living their lives. We would just be so in love with ourselves that it doesn't matter because you're like, okay, I love myself so much. Oh, look at that different person. That's cool with me. Look how different they are. And that's it. And you wouldn't even have that stand out to you because when you're in a loving kind of vibration, you find the thing that makes you to connect, not the thing that makes you guys disconnect. You know what I mean? Okay, so that's it for this week's episode, Vibrators. And until next Friday, let's do the work and let's manifest our best lives. Bye. 
Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I fucking did it. I really fucking did it.